Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Now, this slide here is a little bit more telltale than I'm letting on. Implied volatility does rise and it does fall. It happens all the time. And sometimes it rises and falls a lot. Sometimes it rises and falls so much that it's the most important variable in your whole equation. Now, in volatile periods like we've seen, oh boy, we've, we've been seeing volatility for a while now, when implied volatility rises and falls a whole bunch, it can actually matter more than directional changes in the underlying. It can be hugely important. So the question is, and this is kind of what we're leading up to, and once we get through this segment, we can really kind of put it all together and talk about here's how you actually use this stuff. But, you know, I can't give you an easy explanation. We've got to go through, you know, all this, and you really need to understand it in order to be able to use it. <clears throat> so let's say we have a currency price. You know, it's trading at 60 bucks. There's about 30 days till expiration. And let's say, you know, the price of the currency happens to not change at all. But later today, implied volatility rises from 12 to 13. We would see the price of the, you know, some given option, 40 calls, say. Actually, that would be a typo. It should be the 60 call. Rise from $1 to 105 And then as implied volatility rises yet another point, we would see the price of the 60 call rise from 105 to 110. Now, I've already kind of subjectively told you that as implied volatility rises, option prices rises. And that's what we're seeing here. And likewise, if implied volatility were to fall from 12 to 11, we'd see the value of the 60 call fall from $1 to 95 and you know, subsequently, as implied volatility falls another point from 11 to 10, we'd see it fall from 95 to 90. <clears throat> this is what I've already explained. But you notice, each time it rose a point, we saw the value of, each time implied volatility rose a point, we saw the value of the option rise a nickel. And each time applied volatility fell, we saw implied volatility fall by a nickel. Now, in this example, it happens to be a nickel every time. With a different currency, different number of days till expiration or something, it could be something other than a nickel. But it's always a very specific number. And it's important to understand what that number is because you're not really trading implied volatility. You can't call up your broker and say, hey, I made five implied volatility points yesterday. Can you send me a check for five implied volatility points? No, it doesn't work that way you're trading option value, and that does equate to real money. <clears throat> so implied volatility is the figure that changes, that affects your option value, but you need to understand how those changes in implied volatility translate into changes in option value. And here's how you do it with Vega. Vega is one of the Greeks. Now, technically it's not actually a Greek letter, but uh, some option trader early on decided that that would be the best uh, name for a Greek that measures volatility, presumably because it's alliterative, as in they both start in, with a V. <clears throat> so we use Vega as such. Vega is the rate of change of an option value relative to a change in implied volatility. It's measured in dollars and cents. So if you were to look at an option chain and see a vega of 0 0.05, that means 5 cents. That means every one full point that implied volatility changes, 
your option price changes by a nickel. Okay, <clears throat> now we've kind of come full circle here. We understand realized volatility. We understand implied volatility. And we understand how that translates into real dollars and cents in our pocket. Now, we need to understand, you know, how does this work? How do I forecast it? How do I make smart opinions on it? Because I know that if implied volatility changes, I could make or lose money. But how do I know if it's going to change? Well, here's how. You, you, you look at volatility charts. Just kind of like stock charts, um, there's a starting point. Well, stock charts are a starting point for volatility analysis. You look at just a regular old stock chart, or in this case, a currency chart. And, you know, you might see big, big price swings, you know, but in order to quantify those, we use volatility figures. And so to accurately measure changes in volatility and make intelligent predictions about future volatility, we don't look at a chart of the currency. We look at a volatility chart. It's a way to analyze volatility in much the same way that a price chart enables you to analyze a currency. You can get these charts from your broker, from other sources online, from fxoptions.com, or you know, really a ton of sources for free. They're becoming more ubiquitous. They're not quite as ubiquitous as you know, price charts. But you see them more and more because option trading is on the rise and because if you're going to trade options, you absolutely have to look at a volatility chart every single time. Or else you could be getting into a trade at a lousy volatility level, putting yourself at a tremendous disadvantage. So we're going to use these charts to analyze both the realized and implied volatility over a certain period of time, probably like you know six months or a year to make smart decisions about future volatility. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.